I got bad news for you. I'm in here working on a, working on a project, some homework I have for myself, and I've realized that the way I operate is different than other how other people operate and um, the uniqueness of it. But I've discovered that probably if I was to tell what I'm about to tell you to the person who I, who wrote these questions that I'm answering, then they may be. I don't know. Let me just let me just share this and get this off my chest real quick. Abdul Cool Tie Full of Tie. Why about Zoom? I'm a fairy goon, Shilla El Kaloon. I am in the love of all and all love is in me. I am a part of all and all is a part of me. I am one with all and all is one with me. And I can succeed as a part of all and fail as an individual. I can be all that I wish in all as long as my wish is to stay in all. I am never alone. All is, I am. All can, I can. All does, I do. Instant J, Elaku. What I have realized is, here, here's the bad news. You are afraid of your uniqueness. And you, when you search to try to make it and compare yourself to other people and try to be like somebody else, then you're already done. That's where your failure is at, is in the homogenization. And everybody keeps hollering about this style is different than this style. But the bad news is nobody's really trying to go deep and be a piece, a piece of the puzzle. Everybody's lazy. Oh, team, team, uh, team, ah, team Taurus, Atlanta, Georgia. Please press two if you shared this video, and please state your city and state in what team zodiac you on. What up, fam? So, here's the lie, and it's the from the bull jive new age. We're all one. No, you're not. You are a part of all, and all is part of you. I ain't everything. I ain't everybody. Everybody ain't me. So we believe that Jesus Christian thing. And that's the bad news. You afraid to be you. That's why you fail. And it's that simple. Because you are here trying to say, I'll talk to my man earlier today. And he was talking about Dr. Mitra Gibson. And I was like, I can't compare myself to him no more because he got a whole human, different human design set up. He got a whole different set of life karmas that he's dealing with. He got a whole set of experiences in his childhood that have developed him to where he is at right now. He has an entirely different set of gifts. But when we get into like programs like this right here, like the one I'm in, I'm in a uh, man, a mature manhood's rites of passage. It's a 10 week program and every week, we have these questions to answer. And every time I'm just sitting back like reading the questions and I'm like, these are cookie cutter questions. They're not asking me nothing about me. Like, but because I'm an empath or I'm intuitive or whatever, I hear all these other people answering like this. But I ain't built like, okay, so one of the questions was, can you identify a time in your life when you are obsessive toward a goal with burning desire to succeed? Can you identify a time in your life when you are obsessive towards a goal with burning desire to succeed? That question is so general. But it doesn't, to me, I had to like break out to put an individual answer in there because it feels like, like the person who writes this, he keeps score with his life. He keeps score of all these things. He's in his head all the time. That's the bad news. The bad news is you and you, when you start to compare experiences in your life day to day and like keeping score and being tit for tat, that's a severe Virgo thing. What up, Maria? What up, Stars? What up, Sonya? What up, Miss May? Pristine Ariel? Enid Carter? So my conversation, I guess, is about human design, about astrology, about spirituality, but it's also about you in your head too much. We're so petty. That's the bad news. You are so petty. You fail because you're trying to be an individual by comparing yourself against someone else. And I'm guilty of that too because 
sometimes I'll look and be like, oh, you got the same birthday as Barack Obama. Oh, I got the same birthday as um, Sugar Ray Leonard. Or, oh, you got the same birthday as Mansa Musa. Or you got the same sun sign. Or you got, or so-and-so had this. We got to quit. I'm going to quit comparing. And I'm going to quit participating in comparing me with someone else. Because I don't desire to succeed as an individual, but I'm an individual piece. Look at this. Box of incense. Then there's the wrap. Here come the incense itself. That's me right there. That's you. It's some other incense, right? But I'm just in this pack of incense. And that's the truth. Oh, well, we're all one. If I take all these incense out and light them at one time, they're going to be burning at the same time, but they're all going to be burning individually. Yes, this pack was only 50 cents. They do smell good. I'm going to light one right now just because. But I'm not going to light all of them. So that's the bull jive lie. What up, Sonya? Brooklyn, New York, Team Virgo. I got the same birthday as Coach Kair. When you say stuff like that, you're comparing yourself to other people. So that's my bad news for, for folks. I do a cool tie for the tie. Why about some? I'm a fair going. Shalel Kaloon. And... That's why I really don't like that, even that word like mentorship, because everybody wants to compare what my results are with where you are in your life. I want to inspire you, but I don't want you to try to compare because super assholes compare. Like I know a cat who's an attorney who makes more money than me. He's married and he's got children and he's got a bigger house than I do. And he has more cars than I do. And he have a, he has a driver's license, right? But he ain't got the happiness. He ain't got the joy. He doesn't know things. He doesn't have magical abilities that he is working day to day like I do. He doesn't help thousands of people like I do. So why is he comparing himself to me? He may feel he's better than me. And me and him are not one. We are not one. None of us are one. So please stop listening to the people who trying to express that. Okay? What up, Gwendolyn? Macadoo, hey baby. So, um, what up, spiritualist? What up, Marie? Carolyn? Does anybody understand kind of what I'm saying or what point I'm trying to get across? The bad news is you are not, we are not all one, okay? You got your own pattern. I got O negative blood. If you got B positive blood, then we ain't one. We breathe in the same air, but we breathe in at a different rate. You understand? Your trauma ain't my trauma. You pulling from a place and I'm pulling from a place. The experiences that I have in my mind are my experiences. You might could look and see them from the outside. And that's what this whole world, that's, that's how the code, that's what this matrix really is. This whole matrix situation is about you watching a movie. But the thing is, when do you wake up and start saying, I'm the producer of this movie? So most of the time, the movie that you're running is a comparative narrative to somebody else. I'm comparing to uh, Miss May. I'm comparing to Aja. I'm comparing to Shasta. I'm comparing to Lotus. I'm comparing to uh, Sincere Seven. I'm comparing to Darwin. And then there's no originality. And that's what we are so stale at. We're so stale as a culture. We're not growing. We're not developing. We don't have nothing because we keep being stale, looking at ourselves like it's a movie, like somebody else wrote it. But we wrote it. But you ain't really trying to. You ain't really trying to upgrade the script. If you like, they can change the script whenever they feel like it. The script can have you done got through the writers. This thing got finance. It's got cameras. It's got trucks and lightings and a schedule and they'll still come up there and change the script right there in the movie to make it better. You should you should change your script and make your script better by stop comparing and really be honest and love your story. I really love my story. It took me a long time to love my story. That's why we had these self-discovery classes on Thursday. You know why? Because it's about 
discovering you. It's about discovering you. Ollie hit me the other day and she said, man, me and my husband been married 42 years, but we don't like each other no more. When you going to change the script? That's me. One of my gifts is helping people look at different possibilities, achieve different possibilities. Everybody can have a different possibility, but you can't have it if you don't pick the pen up and start writing it yourself. Uh, Exervia says, he and I should be happy for another woman experiencing him because she is actually me, but in another form. <laughs> you hear the stupidity that's out here? Listen to what she just said. Her dude said that she should be happy for another woman having sex with her man because she's actually me, but in another form. You see how niggas get it twisted? You see how jokes will get, you see how people will manipulate that and play on your ignorance or your naivety, which always goes back to what I'm saying. The bad news once again is you're too romantic. All of y'all too romantic. You won't leave a situation. You think somebody owes you something. You um, watch these movies that keep programming you to, 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 to think it's going to have a romantic outcome for you to be attached to something. When most people are attached to dying, most people are attached to death. Hey, Candace, most people, when they be t most, especially men right now, the bad news is you ain't got no legacy. You can't leave nothing for your children. You only can do what you can do in the now. That's the bad news. Nobody's broke it to you yet. You think that you got an opportunity to be uh, some, that you can uh, create a memory that's going to outlive your death or your life. The bad news is you don't have to die. The bad news is you believe in death. You believe like, well, everybody else is going to die. I only got this amount of time right here and such and such and such and such. You continually let somebody else write your own crappy narrative. Right. Now the other girl worried about me and I gave him to her. Why are you worried about another girl? There you go. You The reason he had to tell you that is because your narrative was you were a penis watching. You so worried about where his penis is going. How's his penis going over there up in another woman? Really, really affecting you at the core of who you are. I was looking at the little uh, cheater's court the other day. How stupid can you be as a woman to let your intuition, which is your God-given talent, tell you that this person is doing something and you have to go through all this ridiculous, ignorant shenanigans of ignoring what you really think to go to court so he can confess. Men, let me just break bread with you and tell you what a woman wants. She wants you to confess. When a woman wants you to confess for something that she intuitively knows, she's stupid. That's a dumb woman. To me, I'm just, that, that's a dumb person anyway. If, if we in a... If I'm going to get a tarot reading or astrology or human design or some cards, and I'm coming to get some strategy help because I need some strategy help on what is my design, what does this mean, stuff like that. But if I have a dream or some intuition about something for show, 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 and I go to a person and they lie about it and I know they lying about it and I stick around because I want them to confess, I'm stupid. So if I see some, if I know that about myself, then stupid is and stupid does. So when I look around and see another woman who does that or even another nigga who does that, another man who does that and it's like, you know what? I don't know, man, but I really feel in my gut. Well, what you asking her for? You asked her, did she lie to you? You felt she lied. You had all the evidence. You got it on film, but she don't know you got it on film. And then she lied to you and now you broke down about it. You stupid. Man and woman, you stupid. So that's the bad news I have for people. A lot of people are stupid because they're too romantic and they are denying what their intuition tells them. They de You deny your individuality because you're always caught up in a world of comparing. When I put on some clothes and I'm fresh and I'm like on my nines, it's only about how do you feel right now, Kair? I don't give a damn... Like, that's why my gym membership is messed up. Because I ain't taking no more peer pressure to lose this gut. I accept me for who I am. 
I've been deleting all these chicks with these big asses and pretty titties and stuff on my Instagram that I was following because they ain't got no substance. They don't have no substance. I got substance. I want to see more of myself. So I know we're not all one because when I see somebody who doesn't have substance, then what the hell am I dealing with them for? I, this is my man Dante. I used to I, I used to sort of compare my man myself to Dante. I was like, dang, Dante was sleeping on the couch. Now he making millions. Dante is successful doing um Amazon sales and marketing online. Maybe I could do it like Dante's doing it. Stupid. All I gotta do is embrace my gifts. Then I can pound Dante up for embracing his gifts. He giving strategies to other people. So then when I realized that, then I turned Dante into my teacher. Then I turned Penny Cook into my teacher. Because I ain't stupid no more. What my intuition tells me is, is the facts. So, but so, and the, I only had to watch that show the other day because I was at a restaurant and it was on a big TV. And I was like, let me see what this is. But it's really how stupid people are. And people who watch it and the producer and the spell that people are under, the spell that people are constantly under to compare yourself with somebody else, not appreciate your value and keep count. Just like this question. Can you identify a time in your life when you were obsessive toward a goal with burning desire to succeed? Why do I care about a past? I, I, I can't hardly answer questions like that in my past. What's my phrase? What's my phrase from Uncle Michael? What do you say? Let me see. Can I invite his butt? Um, hold on. Yeah. My Uncle Michael told me one time, he said, a man, a man with a true, a man with a true heart quickly forgets an honest day's work. A man or a woman with a true heart quickly forgets an honest day's work. I'm not keeping score. I'm not keeping score. There's only one score. Ma'at. These deities out here are the only thing that's keeping score. What's Ma'at going to do when you supposedly die? What's Ma'at going to do? How many of y'all are Egyptian or cult? What's Ma'at going to do? What's the scale for? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? It ain't but one thing. She ain't looking to keep score. I get You get judged every night when you die. So if you woke up, then obviously you pass judgment. Russell Simmons wrote a book called Do You. A man with an honest heart quickly forgets and quickly forget. A man with a, a, a true heart quickly forgets an honest day's work. It's a guilty day's work. When you stole something that you try to keep up with. It. So I'm just a little frustrated. I'm going to go through these questions, but I'm glad they ignited me to uh, even have this dialogue and to share. I just want to just talk my way through it. The next question was like, if not, can you identify when a burning desire would have had an impact on your success? Why should I remember that? To me, that's a corny question. And I probably going to write something what do you call it? Um, something with a smart ass response, but it's going to be an honest response. So what up, Megan? Um, that's all I got for y'all today. Yeah, man. Like even as a historian, like even in going to college, I decided my degree is in professional history. So I thought having all this information from the past to compare it, I'm doubting the whole Sankofa thing right now. Oh, I got to look back to see where I'm going. Why? Why do I have to look back to see where I'm going? Is that really factual? Is that tradition Is that tradition really helpful for me right now? I don't know, Brittany. You're going to have to come on screen and tell me what it is. It's all bad news, though. This man, Kevin Ware, he probably got a poem about it. When Mars, my authentic real self. There's no authenticity around here. You know how to keep your man at home if you want to keep him at home. If you are a penis watcher, be authentic. You want to know how to get somebody to like you, be authentic. You want to know how to start living your best life, be authentic. 
That's why I really do love astrology and human design because I get to say what I say what I see. And other people they don't want to see it. They don't want to see it. They don't that's why they upset. They pay me so I can coach tell me what my chart says. You know what? That's such a respected position. I honor everybody that's ever came and got a consultation from me because what you're really telling me is that you bogged down and you can't do surgery on yourself. I'm a spiritual surgeon. That's why I always call it spiritual pharmacy. I can write you a prescription for avoiding things or I can take the blade and cut you open and go get it out of there and save your life. But then after I pull the disease out and sew you back up and I tell you what the... Um, what the rehab program is, then you got to do that. So normally that's what that's what my sessions are. When we talk about what are the possibilities for you, what are what is this, what is that, is is normally all about you doing the rehab work for what we discovered. That's why we had these classes on Thursday. It's called self discovery. You just come ask the question, and it's going to trigger more DNA explosions. Be yourself. Stop comparing. Oh, you said, oh, yeah, when you die, you, you're you judged every night. Every one of us has an angel, a guardian, some type of celestial being that goes before the celestial court and is your spiritual attorney. Every night you go to sleep. The child that dies in their crib, they lawyer lost. You have somebody, you had a child, they died when they was like four years old. It was over. That was it. Everybody is not you at a certain age, you get a celestial being assigned to you. You're born with celestial beings assigned to you. It's normally not to you older. We'd be like, oh, who my spiritual parents? Who this? They been around. Oshun been around. You may y'all been around. Jade Emperor been around. All these entities been around. And they go and they go each night when you go to sleep and they plead your case for you so you can wake up the next morning. More bad news, right? Stop comparing yourself to other folks, yo. Yeah. So now you already done the judgment. So you don't have to keep score. Your attorney's keeping score. But at the super, super end, my aunt, your heart is going to be weighed by a feather. That's going to be it. It ain't going to be like, well, this is the reason why your heart did not do this. That's why your life is such a mystery. You know why you watching this now? Because you reincarnated because you didn't pass last time. You had a heavy heart. You seen American gods? They put the heart on the scale, put the feather on the other side. The heart got to be up here. The feather got to be down here. It can't be even. Period. So if your heart is heavier than a feather, then you got to go back and reincarnate. There go your rules right there. You don't believe in reincarnation? That's your, That's you. That's you, but that's what happened to you. That's it. So if you got a heavy heart, they don't tell you what happens. You have to come back and figure it out yourself. That's why I'm back. I'm back and I have to keep figuring it out. A lot of my past relationship ended because I was a penis watcher. Right, and so you attracted a pussy watcher. And y'all was two ignorant, two ignorant people together wasting time on this reincarnation. That's the other bad news. You're wasting time on your reincarnation. Channeling hard today. I still gotta get back and do my homework though. <laughs> how can you how can you afford to waste time on the incarnation? That's why I just stopped in the middle. I'm making this right here, and then we're gonna say prayer and I'm out. Um if you just got here, please press two, share the video. I'm Coach Kyrie, Team Taurus, Atlanta, Georgia. So please, if you just got here, state your city and state in what zodiac you with. That's the rules of how we do this thing. What up, Lucy? Right. And it really doesn't matter whether somebody believes in reincarnation or not. It's happening. It's happening. You don't know the rules to get up out of here. You know the rules of the poor programming. The poor programming that we have while you're down here. Most people that get in my inbox or most people that I have to coach or most of the time when I had to go get some coaching, it was because of my poor programming. I'm, I'm trying to get you out of the poor programming and get you back into your Mars programming. My authentic real self, player. Too much fear. Where's your dick going? Oh, 
who who are you having sex with? Because if you lay with her, then and you're gonna bring her energy back over to me, and then I could get a disease. Come on, man. Y'all still believe in that dumb shit? All your experiences are already inside of you. If you got a disease, nobody brought it to you. It was already inside of your code. Ain't nobody never gave you no disease, no crabs, no herpes, no nothing. No! What if your womb wasn't so sacred? What if your penis wasn't so sacred? What if you could see all of the experiences that was already going to play out, but you just didn't know them? Would it be sacred then? Right. Now, I don't want no help. I don't want no unhealthy coochie. But if, it's, if, if, it, if it is some unhealthy coochie, then that's on her. The condom ain't going to stop nothing, player. It ain't going to stop no experiences. What's, what's yours is going to happen to you, period. Yeah, what up, Team Las Vegas Pisces? Pool programming versus Mars programming. Yep, I know somebody, y'all just like, I told you I had bad news for you. Blaming other people. What about spiritual demons through sex? Didn't I just say everything that happens to you is in your experience already? The demon had to get to you some kind of way. Is your demon. What about spiritual demons through sex? It's yours. You were supposed to have that experience and you allowed that experience to happen to you. Matter of fact, you chose that experience. That's why you was already pontificating with the story of trying to blame the other dude. Oh, well, since you're over there having sex with her, then now you're going to bring back a, a possession to me. Why'd you sleep with him in the first place? That's why, like, my man, he had the joke. The comedian had the joke. He was like, women don't have intuition. Because you would have known that I was a sorry ass nigga when you got here. Oh, my intuition told me this. Where was your intuition at when you first laid up with me? Was your intuition turned all the way off? But now your intuition is turned all the way up? Well, did I was I the one that so then give me credit for giving you intuition then? Because I always what the whole say, Bill Juan? You are who you are when you came here. You are who you are when you came here. So if at the end of us being together for five months, five years, 50 years, and you start saying, I can't trust you and all this, what was your intuition at at the beginning? I can't with people sometimes. Tumbling down the mountain the whole time, you got wings, just scared to fly. You wasn't in love, you was in romance. You was in foolish romance. You don't know what the definition of love is. Here we go. Let's challenge somebody. What's the definition of love, Miss May? You're new to my channel. Some people who are already on here, they know what the definition of is. What's your def what is the definition? There's a difference. Here's more bad news. You don't know what love is, so you blame love. Look how she blamed love. Love is blind, and it will take over your mind. Eve, you're parroting. That's ignorance. You're ignoring the facts. Just say you don't know what the definition is. To say that you've been you've been repeating the programming from someone else. You don't authentically know what love is. People don't know what love is. They don't know what trust is. And they don't know what sex is. They're parroting what other people said it is. Nothing can have power over you unless you allow it. Um. Love to me is understanding. You see how she put the word to me? She put to me in it. Everybody, what's the definition of water? Everybody. What is the definition of water? Everybody, what's the formula for water? Start typing. What's your formula for water, everybody? In the world, whether you're in China, Mexico, Brazil, Miami, Gulf Coast, India. No, no, let's start with water first. What's the definition of what's the definition of water? Water is H2O everywhere. If you ask 50 people what the definition of water is, you're going to get one answer. 
is scientific. Love is scientific just like water. It's one definition. It ain't no your definition. Your definition of water is not H2O. That's the definition of water. That's more bad news for you. There's no my definition. There's what is the definition. So when I ask you what love is, you gave me what your definition doesn't matter. There's more bad news for you. Your definition doesn't matter. What is oxygen? What is carbon monoxide? What is carbon dioxide? What are atoms? What are molecules? What are particles? What are protons? What are neutrons? These things have straight definitions. So when love comes up, you don't know. But the bad news is you got too much pride. You wasn't in love. You was in pride. A lot of y'all is not in love, especially you women. Y'all in pride. I'm too prideful. Okay. I ain't mad at that though. But just say it. <laughs> Can you just say I'm prideful? How about that? Can you just say I'm prideful? Versus trying to make up something. Yeah, she just talking. Now she just rattling on. She still don't want to say she don't know. She says, okay, fine. Love is a chemical imbalance in the brain. Here's what love is. <laughs> Pay attention. Because God showed you what love is, but you don't pay attention to God. Especially in relationships. That's more bad news. Love is giving, seeking nothing in return. Somebody please type it. Love is giving, seeking nothing in return. One more time. Love is giving, comma, seeking nothing in return, period. God continues to give you mercy and grace every day, seeking nothing from you. So many people on the planet are so disobedient to the rules and the laws that's down here on planet Earth. They just don't want to obey. They want to make up their own stuff. Their pride is their own. Doing why it's called one of the seven, seven deadly sins. And then guess what? Now, but, but what does God do? God keeps right on giving. God keeps on giving, asking nothing from your sorry ass, asking nothing from my sorry ass. If I do my best, man, I'm going to get closer to God. If I don't, God don't care. He still keeps giving. We don't. So, so most of us, here's more bad news. Most of us have never been in love. Most of us have definitely been mentally imbalanced. Most of us have definitely been prideful, but most of us have never been in love. Where you really, because love don't hurt. Like, I mean, love is an action verb. Verb. Love is a verb. V-E-R-B. Not noun. Not adjective. Love is a verb. Hashtag that. So if I give and I ain't want nothing back from you, and then you don't love me back, I, I shouldn't be hurt. Because you didn't renege on the contract. But if I say I conditionally love you, I love you, but I need you to love me back, then guess what that is? Then that is definitely an opportunity for me to get jammed up. See this elbow? It's worse than the fist. It's worse than the finger. You hear that? Yeah. Oh, that'll hurt. You, you uh, got... All of that jacked up because you never been honest with yourself. You never had nobody be honest with you. You live in this illusion of uh, we are one. We are not one. We are separate pieces of the all. We don't all work together. Even though everything works together, we don't consciously all work together. We have misunderstandings and miscommunications and differences. And that's fine and dandy. But the whole funny part is, it's bad news that you've probably never been in love. I, I'm a love seeker. I'm a love, I want to find out. That's why we had a class on Thursday about the relationship language. So I can communicate to somebody what my style of relating is. So when I start loving you, you'll be like, this is how he going to communicate his love. 
Because they're not, there aren't, there's 12, there are no different love languages. That's bullshit. There's 12 different love, I mean, relationship languages, but there's only one language of love to give, seeking nothing in return. If you're looking, some, looking for something back from me, it ain't love, it's business. That's all right. That's all right. There's business going on. But God, bonjour, Karen Wright. Bonjour, excuse me. But we're talking about the business, the business faculty. What up, Barry? Um, I think that's all I got for today. Um, I got to finish my homework and I'm getting hungry again. I'm going to go get me some snacks. Okay? Hopefully this helps someone. Um, I appreciate you all for just letting me go and do my little rant for the middle of the day. What up, the Enchantress? How you doing? Um, take this bad news and try to apply it to what you got going on. I ain't trying to sell you nothing today. Sell you on your damn self. Sell you on stop being so ignorant and stop being dumb. Okay? And wake up. Pretty please. And quit comparing yourself and like holding on to like all these things. A lot of y'all need to have a spiritual um, house cleaning. Spiritual house cleaning is probably the number one. Um, spiritual house cleaning is probably the number one ritual to your success that everyone. What about a money ritual? You need to do a spiritual house cleaning. I want to be love. I want to have love better my partner. You need to do a spiritual house cleaning. I want to um, celebrate my ancestors better. You need to do a spiritual house cleaning. I want to learn Tantra or Tai Chi. You need to do a spiritual house cleaning. Anything that you come to me with, I can always ask you what your altar game look like. What your altar game look like. Amina says, what did I walk in on? Uh, me being a little salty about how different I am and how other people aren't. Um, no, no. I'm not salty because other people aren't where I'm at. I'm salty when another person tries to uh, lather their experience on me and that be my experience. No, I'm going to flush the toilet. I'm going to let it come in. I'm going to take what I need out of it. Then I'm going to flush it and let the rest go. Straight like that. And so that's bad news for people because everybody has been taking in all this stuff that they think is really theirs or is authentically theirs or is their real thought and it's not yours. Somebody programmed you. I'm so happy that I'm not programmed. I like for it to be more people who could start deprogramming or even ask for my help to do deprogramming. That's what these videos here do, I hope. I hope they um, incite deprogramming, right? Get some help from somebody who's on the path of deprogramming, deconditioning. If you're into human design, anybody into human design in here? She says, thanks for keeping it real, Coach. Hurt my feelings, but that's for the realness. I don't care about your feelings. Nobody care about my feelings. Why are you so caring about your feelings? Are you caring more about your feelings or about, or about being authentic? Which one would you rather have, ladies? Ladies, you dudes too. You want your feelings to be worried about or you would like to be um, authentic? Which one you want? Um, I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for being such a lovely example, Queen May. Definitely ain't nothing personal. You know what I'm saying? You can ask Cheryl. I will get in you. I will get in you and get at you if something is going on. You're just a part of the all. Once you get your part of the all right and you shine in that high reflection on other people, then you'll be shining that high reflection on other people. You won't be like me. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be like you. I want you to be more like the real you that's sleep trying to wake up and less like you that's pretending that you know what you're doing. All right? Authenticity. So when you, if somebody asks you something you don't know, be like, it's okay that I don't know. All right, I'm cool. I don't know. My man asking me to help him get his song on the radio or get it played down here in Atlanta. I don't know. I told him I ask around, but I ain't saying, oh, I got it. I'll handle it. I'm not afraid to disappoint nobody. Because 
What is disappointment is an illusion too. Disappointment is you ain't really looking. You ain't, you really got these ex. Disappointment is this. Oh, I got a good one. Disappointment is the failure to meet other people's false narrative of you. Disappointment is failure to meet the counterfeit narrative that others have for you and of you. And you trying to meet it, dumbass. And you ain't never met yourself. This path, this path of self-discovery, the road is long as hell. That's why like when people ask me, like, your goals, what's your legacy? I can't stand with a man be talking about legacy. I need to leave a legacy for my children. I need to leave a legacy. You a death mongrel. That's the part I got for everybody. Avoid folks who always talking about legacy. Let me decode for you. Anybody always talking about like I've never, never had a spiritual master. Malachi, Malachi York, Sunyata Saraswati, Abby Ilias, Mitchell Earl Gibson, Kathy Ann Gibson, Maxwell Narty, Amsu Bay L, Sister Myra. And anybody in between who I didn't name, never have I ever heard them use the word legacy in their in their in their vocabulary. Peace, Universal Queen, August twenty third in the building. Go back and look at any of my videos and have you ever saw me use the word legacy? Legacies is for people who honor death. I don't honor death. Death is not a part of life. Death is an illusion just like time. But. All right, fam. Mahalo at y'all. I appreciate y'all. I found you in peace. I'm going to go back and put you right back in prayer as I finish my homework. And the Bacoa, get your like and call. Tatiya Tessera, Kabel Renata, I'm Chasak Venu, Tahara Numera, Nagi Boa, the Shea Yikadeka, Kabava Shamna, Barkam Tavam, Raka Maid, the Zika Taker, Tamid Gamna. Kasin Kadosh, Badaru, Tufka, and the hell out of Taker. You keep your head on chopping ends or Craig Katushka Taker. Shavata Nuka Bear, Lushma, the Zaka to New Yodea Tilamo. Buruk Shem, Kavoma Kuto, Lalam Vaid. Shavata Nuka Bear, Lushma, the Zaka to New Yodea Tilamo. Buruk Shem, Kavoma Kuto, Lalam Vaid. Alright, fam. Peace. If you just got here and you got here late, please share the video. Press 2. Keep it popping. If you're on YouTube, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Um, and hopefully this inspired you to get you some growth on. Uh-uh-uh-uh-uh. Fake out the devil, baby. Uh-uh. Peace.